money. We all know, or think we know, what money is. So I want to ask each of you here today to consider what does money mean to you, to your family, to all of us? Academically, of course, money is an exchange of uh, value, a store of value. <clears throat> but deep down, intrinsically, don't you think that money means something much more? It used to be that money was simple, local, personal. But that was when the world was more simple, local, personal. Commerce used to be face-to-face. -face. Money used to be tangible. Money served to deepen, tighten, strengthen relationships. Not business relationships. Relationships throughout neighborhoods, towns, society. When commerce became more remote, more international, <coughs> money took a backstage. Wealth disparities around the globe began to heighten. <coughs> Immigration exploded as people with less sought better lives for themselves in the lands of more. And money became something that was cold, impersonal, and complex. Today, however, we live in a new mobile reality <coughs> where information, communication flows seamlessly, effortlessly at the speed of light around the globe, across borders, across countries, across cultures. <coughs> Money needs to regain its deeper meaning in this new age. Allow me to tell you a story about a, an unlikely friend of mine. At his own request, I'm not showing you his face here. His name is Hector. Uh, I met him a few years ago. He was working on a construction project on my house. Over the, the months of that project, I got to know Hector very well. <coughs> and his story has changed my life. Hector grew up in a small town in the Mexican state of Puebla. The, local, the name the locals don't even remember, know how to, to spell. It's one of these menless towns. <clears throat> there's no jobs, there's no industry. So literally 90% of the men in the town come to the United States every year for 10 months of their year to work, earn money, bring it back home to support their families. <clears throat> Some 20 years ago, Hector, on his second journey to the United States, decided to stay make a life for himself here. He worked as a day laborer, <coughs> standing on the street. You've seen him by Home Depot. Uh, taking any job that he could to earn money. He lived in a two-bedroom apartment with 12 other men. 12. <coughs> he scrimped and saved and sent as much money back home as possible. It wasn't unusual for him to send half to three quarters of his monthly paycheck back home to support his family. It still isn't. <coughs> Over the years, through hard work, backbreaking labor, sheer will and determination, Hector has created a success for himself. He has his own construction company now, employing a handful of men. Now, by any measure, in any region in the world, a small business success contributing here to our local economy. <coughs> and still, 20 years later, religiously, monthly, he sends money back home to support his family, his extended family, his church, and the community that, that he still refers to as his own. The money goes to pay for his mother's heart medication, his niece's schooling, the religious festivals, town upkeep. <coughs> Hector's story is not unique. It's not even rare. Hector is but one of 10 million people living in California who were born in Mexico. 10 million. With remittances comprising the second largest component of Mexican GDP, 
How much worse off would our neighbors to the south be without the likes of Hector? We've seen the news. Right? How much more violence, suffering, pain, death, despair would there be without Hector? Here in the United States, now, how much worse would the drug problem be, the associated crime and violence here be, without Hector contributing to his local community and the extended community? <clears throat> but for all the good that Hector has done and is doing, he still worries each and every single time he sends money back home that his mother is going to be harmed when she goes to pick it up. <clears throat> She's been mugged twice already. Thankfully, she hasn't been hurt either time, but we've seen the news. We know how things are. For all the good that Hector is doing, he's paid for the construction of a house down in Puebla. And he's bought a house here in the Central Valley. Yet, he has no credit card, has no savings plan, has no online bill payment. Right. He deals in cash. He bought his house here in cash. He brought in a duffel bag. For all the good that Hector is doing, <coughs> he still, still introduces himself as Jose when he meets someone new, just in case. <coughs> to Hector, to everyone else, in today's mobile reality, money needs to evolve, needs to become something more than just a medium of exchange and <clears throat> a store of value. Money can mean safety, security, empowerment, access, convenience, connectivity, community, and more. Not just to Hector, to you, to me, to all of us. <clears throat> we, we here, in Silicon Valley, we in this room. We are the music makers. We are the dreamers of dreams. Right? We need to do more than just keep track of balances and credits and debits. Right? We need to focus our innovation and financial services on the higher order needs of people, not clients or customers or consumers. People, remember, these are people. Right. People like you, people like me, people like Hector. Because money is the social fabric that binds us all together. Thank you very much.